Okay, here's part two as promised. Let's do the problems. Okay, so the lights are on, which means our diffs are unlocked. Turn them off and we're locked. Light is on for first gear. So we are ready for problem one. Now this is problem one. It's a challenging problem. We've got big tires and portals, so clearance shouldn't be much of an issue. Traction still absolutely could be. Now I would usually unlock the rear, and I'm going to. It's nice to be able to do that. Because I don't want as much forward momentum yet. And now I do. So now that we're just repositioned a bit, I'll lock the rear again. I'm, I'm seeing the rubber conforming, but we're having trouble with traction. It's a heavy truck and not much weight down low. I think that might be the first thing. Now, one thing I haven't tested, seeing how similar these axles are, I wonder whether some of the weight upgrades for the TRX4 axles would work. Let's unlock that rear again. I wonder whether they work for the rescuer here. The um, portal covers are different. They're definitely different, so maybe not. But there's always the good old backup of just putting heavier wheels on it's not my first preference with crawlers but um if you can't do anything else uh heavier wheels will help it just adds to the load on the motor there's more rotational mass and i know i'm trying to convince you of going 2s instead of 3s here and i usually use 3s on stuff but another plus for 2s aside from longer battery life is lower heat the electronics aren't working as hard and when you're driving the truck hard like this honestly that's uh well worth considering especially on a cheaper machine i don't know if we're gonna oh hang on we'll try problem one again i'll leave the failed attempts in because we're having a chat i don't want to say all that again all right hopefully i don't break it but that's what we're here for Find the limits if we can. There we go. So line, <laughs> there's not much room for error with line choice like that. We'll keep going and come on, grip. Now, it's nice to see the tires fit inside the wheel arch. That's, that's definitely a good thing. Um, I don't want the truck to push itself around. So what I'm gonna do is unlock the rear and try and guide the front around. Here. Now the rear is going to fall down and we're going to be twisted, but that's okay. Okay, so we're not necessarily going to finish this. Oh, we did that. Look at that. <laughs> nice. All right, we'll lock the, lock the rear again. Lights are off, so both are locked and lights off here, so we're still in first. Let's move on to problem two. Okay, problem two. Now the wheelbase is 12.8 inches almost. It's uh, 324 mil, which is longer than the standard 313 mil. And that length hurts it on stuff like this because your skid gets caught up. I see a potential to get through there. With a 17 turn motor, that's good for speed, but when you're asking it to do slow stuff like this, you really are um, asking a lot. Uh, and heat can become an issue. Uh, note the um, uh, mud flaps. They're bending behind the tire, but they can also get run over and torn off here if you're not careful. <laughs> it's ugly. Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh, it's so close, it's so close. I love that there's clearance here. The way this articulates is very satisfying. No, all right. 
Another issue is your uh, approach angle with the bull bar hanging so far forward. It looks good, but uh, it's it makes uh, approaches difficult. You need to be a bit creative with the uh, angle you come in. Now the servo still has plenty of strength here. I'm actually having fun with this car. This is, uh, it's entertaining. There's an old meme of a road motorcycle crossing the uh, Jardine River way up north near the Cape. And it says adventure is taking inappropriate equipment to out of the way places. This car is not inappropriate, but it's certainly not really made for this. Oh, here we go. We might actually, there we go. I think we come back and... No! So it's the vehicle's length here. The bumper is scraping. There we go. Maybe. Oh, look at that. We did it. This thing is a, tra a trail driving truck, first and foremost. Oh. Here, we'll turn the headlights on. Ready? There they go. Uh, it's first and foremost a trail truck, so I don't expect as much of it on crawling. Mm, if I'd held that, that would have been cool. Oh, and look, check it out. We're going to stop problem two because I don't want to unnecessarily damage this vehicle. But here's your mud flap. It's just held on by a couple of screws. And because it's rubber, it stretches. So we should hopefully be able to just pull the holes over the screw heads. And there you go, back on. We're gonna skip problem four. It's a bit much for this little truck and that's actually quite okay. Now we're gonna unlock these diffs. And what we are gonna do is enjoy this as a trail truck to get ourselves to the start of problem five. Diffs are unlocked currently, just for fun. And that's what this truck really is all about. <laughs> I, I don't know about you, but I find it very satisfying to take a vehicle with unlockable diffs to keep things unlocked as much as possible until you need to lock them. It actually encourages you to make good line choices. Oh, I'm doing some gardening here. have to come across. There we go. Oh, there we don't go. I've done this twice now. To get back on your wheels when you're on your side, the side of the car that's on the ground, you either aim the, the back of the front wheel down in reverse, or you aim it forward and accelerate forward and that is how you get a thing back up on its wheels. We'll come around here. It was a sloppy a sloppy uh, start to problem five but I actually don't mind how we get across the first boulders there. This is the main event for five as far as I'm concerned. And again, hang on, we'll get the camera right here. Sorry, you can't see. That's not good, you've got to be able to see. We're not making a radio show here. All right. So we're locked front and rear. You need to kind of stay to the left to not fall off, but you need to stay to the right to get traction. So it's, it's quite an entertaining problem. Servo's fading a bit, but it's also working as hard as you'd ever work this truck. I'm just feathering the throttle. I'm never letting off the throttle. There we go. Right, we've managed problems one, three, and five. We couldn't do two. I doubt we're gonna do six. The clicking is just the tire lugs flicking on the front wheel arch. 
I'm inclined to let it be. I don't want to cut it and change the pretty lines on this body. Unlock the rear. Again, my little trick, because you want to bring the car around, you need to unlock the rear. That's how you can yank the car left or right with the fronts locked. Uh, the fronts can stay locked pretty much the whole time when you're crawling, but having an unlockable rear can be useful. And we're locked again. Again with these lights on this thing, I love it. I wish all radios had an indicator like that. It's really handy. I need to come this way a little without falling. And we're currently resting on the bumper and on the, uh, the poor old mud guards. While I drive, I'm also paying attention to the dry shaft. I'm seeing a lot of movement in that little plastic drive shaft. Why? Okay, so there's a lot of lateral movement in the front, and that's your, your upper link. It's not, it's not stopping the, the axle from just rotating under torque, and it's quite significant. I don't know how much of a big deal that is, since the car hasn't missed a beat yet, and we are, we're driving it too hard for what it's designed for, really. Yes. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. We've lost the mud guard. Rear mud guard. Rear left. No. Yeah. That's all she wrote, I think. I reckon we'd get it up there eventually, but I think it'd be too hard on it. Okay. So there you have it. Problems one, three, and five successful. Six, I think we nearly did. Two, there was no chance, and four, yeah, I cancelled it. The main things I noticed during that were the movement. I could see the, I could see this thing moving around a lot, the drive shaft, and looking at it, the the function of stopping this axle from shifting so much, it's it's on the uh, that's the job of the the top link here. It's really, let me see here. I'll turn this off so I can manipulate it without hurting it. The distance between the top link and the bottom link mount, it's only like it's what five mils? So that doesn't give that doesn't give it a lot of authority. Many axles have a bigger distance, like they'll have the top link mounted at the top of the pumpkin and the other links at the bottom. And that gives it, you know, a centimeter, two centimeters even of, of being unable to move. Because these two links are so very close together, top and bottom, even if the ball ends were super tight, there's still a lot of movement. Just an observation, not a big criticism, because again, I was just driving this thing harder now than really it's designed to be driven. I'm pleased to report there were no breakages. One of the main takeaways I'll put to you is if you buy the rescuer, run it on 2S. I'm holding this truck like this right now while we're talking. My fingers are underneath where the WP1060 is, and it's just been managing eight volts of power for this whole test. It's hot underneath the plastic. The heat sink's on top of the 1060, so we're getting heat through the plastic casing of the 1060 ESC, through the double-sided tape, through the plastic of this, uh, of this uh, panel. That's hot. The servo got warm, it was fading though, so I don't think it's capable of getting super hot before it would cook. Uh, the motor, I can't actually get my fingers onto it. It'll be warm. Uh, and the other servos were fine. Radio's happy. And the tires are good. Overall, this is a plush, enjoyable, fun trail truck to drive. I love that you've got some light options here. You can have the headlights on, you can have them flashing. On all settings, the indicators turn, I think. Let me turn this on again and see. I'm pretty sure. So lights are off. They're on flashing now, and then they're on. When they're on, you get the indicator. When they're flashing, you still get the indicator. And when they're off, all right. So the indicator works on all modes. Not a big deal. Uh, for a trail truck, that's actually 
I guess, nice. For a crawler, I personally prefer just to have the ability to have hazards or nothing, but personal preference. I noticed the light bar has been banged down. It's only held on with one screw on each side, but that's typical for light bars, and this isn't a real one anyway. I didn't mention it before, but in the top here with the light kit, there are two spare power panels, so you can actually power these guys if you want, and also a light bar if you install it. They're ready to go. So the light controller on this thing, love it. The wheels and tires, I mean, they look good and they're solid enough. If you change anything, you might change that. But honestly, if you buy this, buy it because you're planning on driving on trails. Don't buy it because you're planning on going rock crawling hardcore with it because while it'll survive, it's gonna be rough on it. It's certainly capable. It's well composed. It's, it's a heavy vehicle, but you know it's a heavy vehicle because it, it does uh, front and rear diff changing and, and your uh, two speed. So it's a fun machine. And it really is fun. Oh, and it was a 6.2 amp hour 2S battery. So it was lugging a lot of weight around today. It's done really well. It's about a four kilo machine like this. So out of the box with no weights down low. Yeah, I like it. There's gonna be a write up by the time you're watching this, I'll have it finished uh, all about this vehicle. I'm very happy with its performance. If you're after a fun trail truck and you're on a budget at the premium end of budget, really good. This, if, if it was this or say the Gen 8 V2, I'd be inclined to buy this unless I really wanted a crawler bias. And if I was biased towards crawling, it would then come down to the Gen 8 versus the Sendero. And you can see all about that in my big budget battle. Uh, as far as trail trucks go, if it's this or a TRX4, well, hey, this is 60% the price of a TRX4. And it's more than 60% of the truck. So if you like it, particularly if you like this Land Cruiser, in Australia it's called the Workmate, and in South Africa I think, I don't know about other markets. This is uh, your no frills, 90s style, 80s and 90s style engineering in a modern machine in real life. And well, I really like it. Throw me a like if you liked it too, or if you just got something out of this video, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time on RC TNT. Now, if you haven't seen it, check out my tire test series here. If you're also interested in RGTs, check out the recent series we did on the Pioneer, the EX86110, that's here too. That was a really good truck. It started bad and it got good. I'll catch you next time.